What is going on everybody? Got another knife for you and this one is a very very special one I would say. Hopefully there's not too many of these floating out there in the world. It definitely was one that I'm glad I got to get an order in on and have and just recently got it in I want to say a month or two back. Uh, maybe a couple months back. I'll check the Instagram post I did on it. But this is the Stan Wilson NFF non-flipper flipper. This is everything that came with the knife uh, from Stan. And the first thing I want to do is discuss the excellent experience I had with him in regards to this knife. So he sent it in this pouch uh, with this tool. I believe this is just for the pivot or for, or for the uh, screws actually on the knife. And then these are the business cards his information, same thing, same information on the back. And then obviously what's nice is this business card is the model knife that I just uh, got from him. Oh, is that not focusing? There we go. And there's his information as well. So, experience with Stan. Uh, I saw a YouTube video years back on this, uh, I believe it was a little over two years ago, probably two and a half years ago. It was a short two minute, 30 second clip. I forget who the gentleman was that did it. I'll try to find it and put it in the link below. And it was awesome. Obviously no one had seen anything like this before. A non-flipper flipper, a bolster activated manual uh, opening knife. So I immediately Found Stan's info, uh, knew of him, uh, knew obviously what a renowned knife maker he was, some of the other models that I've seen, his amazing uh, Damascus stuff that he's done, the you know the different colored Damascus and then the special different materials, mammoth bone, and all, you know, mammoth tusks and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I emailed him and he actually emailed me back, I want to say within like 20 minutes. It was something ridiculous. And he just said, hey, uh, you caught me at the right time. I just happened to be checking my emails. And I just said, I saw this video, I didn't know if you were taking orders for it. He said, yep, taking orders. It's a 24 month wait period. Uh, this is the price for it, uh, for the standard materials. And just tell me what you're looking for, basically, and you'll be on the books. So I did that. Pretty much like I said, I just want the standard model. We'll discuss any kind of options uh, after that. Oh my gosh, forgive me. I haven't even opened this or used this in like a month or so, I believe. Uh, I got it, like I said, two or three months ago. So. Uh, this is not going to go well if I don't do this right. Oh yeah, look at that. Got it open. <laughs> Two minutes, almost three minutes into the video. Sorry about that, guys. So I just really want to highlight what a stand-up guy, an amazing knife experience I had because I have had some not great custom knife experiences lately, guys, and it's extremely been frustrating, bumming me out to no end. So I want to definitely highlight how amazing the experience was and how on spot Stan was with this stuff. So he said two years, I believe that was the end of January, I emailed him 2014. Uh, so come January 16, uh, literally, I think it was one day before the day I'd emailed him in 2014, he sends me an email, he says, Nick, 24 months is up, your knife is on my table, just wanna make sure and confirm everything. So we went through it and the really awesome thing about Stan was he the communication level with him was probably the best I've had of any knife maker to date as far as a custom knife goes because he would email me work in progress picks. He would email me questions to make sure he was doing everything to the you know, specifications I had given. Um, kept it all within the price range that he had quoted to me originally. Didn't change the pricing now that two years are gone. He you know, obviously uh, held with and stood with the, the price quoted to begin with. So to go over it, um, the standard NFF would be stainless steel bolsters, a carbon fiber or G10 uh, face front here and here. And then the liners are titanium, the pocket clip is titanium, and the blade steel is S35VN. So all that was good. I asked him if he could do red G10. He said no problem. Got that. I asked him if he could do any kind of anodizing as far as the titaniums went, and he said no problem on that. And then he also jewels the interior. We'll try to get this to focus. Uh, backspacer there. 
There's his signature, probably one of the nicest, cleanest signatures you'll ever see from a maker on a knife. Uh, very beautiful with that. So uh, I also asked him for his opinion on things too, because I said, what would really look good? I don't want to just say, you know, do this and that. And so we kind of decided, okay, we'll do the titanium liners in gold. And then he even did the side piece here of the pocket clip in gold, and then left it, obviously, the silver finish here, the stainless steel finish here, to match the blade and the bolster. Um, like you can see the jeweling inside there and on that backspacer piece, but it just came out extremely well, and then it was delivered right on time. Um, like I said, he sent me all the work in progress pictures, confirmed everything, uh, confirmed the payment on it, um, showed it to me in outside light, showed it to me in inside light in, in his uh, shop, uh, and it came out, and like I said, everything he stated that would happen, happened. Now, maybe it is, a sad time, a sad sign of the times that when something happens the way it's supposed to, we're actually impressed and surprised by it, especially in the custom knife world. Um, but literally him and Mikkel Williamson have been the only two custom knife makers that I've dealt with that have actually delivered the knife in the time frame that they quoted to me and in the exact specifications that I requested without having to make any changes or adjustments to them. So hats off to them, hats off to Stan. If you can get a knife from Stan, I highly recommend it. Uh, fit and finish is excellent. This is a beefy knife, guys. I don't know if you realize this from other videos. I know there's other ones out there, but there is a lot of weight to this. You can see how thick these slabs of G10 on here are. I mean, extremely thick. And also when he showed me the work in progress ones, it was probably almost double this size and piece that he shaved down to finish this. And then this great high gloss finish on the G10. I mean, look at that. That is gorgeous. Uh, the brushed stainless steel, the brushed pivot, custom pivot there. And then you can see the blade finish. I forget the grit. I think it was like a 400 grit that um, he does the standard finish on these with. And then obviously the highlights and polish on the flats. You know, came very sharp uh, right out of the packaging. And everything's fully hand done. You guys can see several videos on Stan's workshop that have been done and uh, the mastery that he has over the knife making craft in general. But, you know, a very well balanced looking piece. I mean, the way the blade balances against the handle, the cutout here for the hand fits in very nicely. Everything looks very well done. There's no different smudges on here or, or a bad grit finish. Um, there's no hard edges. Everything is perfectly done well around. Everything fits, you know, just an excellent finished knife, the way that it was stated it would be done, the time it was stated to be done, the price it was stated it would be done. Um, so I greatly appreciate that. My one uh, not problem, not issue, um, I guess uh, skill deficiency for my end is I really could not figure out the releasing the bolster part for this, knife, for this blade. Uh, I'm going to try it on camera here, guys, and I've tried it before, and I'll get it every once in a while, but then most times I just can't <laughs> figure out the right way to do it. The nice thing with this is because it is a lockback, uh, you'll see where the lockback is on here, if it focuses. Sorry about all the glean on here. Come on, camera. Focus. Um, right there, there's the line for the lockback. So if you push down here, the uh, blade will release. So you can see that kind of lift up. See that? And this is something maybe some videos haven't shown, so I did want to highlight it. So that obviously can release the blade that way. And you can see perfectly centered. And then that great double click action. And that's just from pulling this bolster here. So, and you can even see the jeweling in there. So the way you're supposed to release this is you do just a little nudge on here and it's supposed to release the blade 
and you can see I just can't I don't know what it is if um, I just don't have it's supposed to be like spinning a quarter in your fingers there we go and let's see if we can do it twice nope I know you guys have like frustrated as heck right now watching me do this because I know there's guys that can easily do this and I just can't figure it out so I mean I just mainly will go back here and just you know obviously hit the backspace and you can see how smooth this is between these two areas and then right here is where it kind of catches back up and drops back in no problem opening it like I said I kind of go to the backspacer and close it oh, see there's the first fail um, <laughs> up Stan's probably turning his uh, turning his head away from this video at this point where I can't utilize the great mechanism that he's created uh, but like I said it doesn't really bother me too much since I can easily go from back here and do the closing I think if I ever get back out with the Wieners and Steels guys, um, I'll talk to uh, Nick and uh, uh, Brian Lee and, and Mike, and I know they've handled a few of these more than I have. I mean, now I have this one, but they've handled, uh, I think, Good Climbing's uh, one of these and then a few of the other guys, so they're maybe more understanding. They could tell me a better idea of how to operate the bolster to close it. See? There, I got it. Um... I don't know. It's like sometimes it's it's simple, and then other times I can't get anything out of it. So, hey, I'm a uh, standard lockback closing guy. Uh, I know that it does work. Like you've seen, it's worked twice here so far, but I just can't get it to do it in a in a smooth fashion as you've seen some of the other guys do. But I wanted to show you this knife, um, tell you about the awesome experience I had getting it. Um, it's definitely a showpiece for me. Haven't even cut anything with this, even to try a cut test on. I haven't even cut a piece of paper. Um, have, you know, obviously wiped down the knife ex uh, extremely to keep it uh, pristine. Only handled it with gloves. <laughs> I know some of you guys are out there just... I know there's guys that get this knife and will just put it in their pocket and, and use it. For me, it's more of obviously a showpiece. And I've said that with no shame that I am more of a collector than a user. I, I have some production knives that I carry and use uh, because that's what they're meant for. And then these custom pieces are more of a showpiece discussion piece something to take out um, do some flipping with and then put back in and uh, keep displayed nicely oh, that's great sound some size comparisons and especially some size comparisons to other custom knives that I have uh, we will do a Will Moon MK6 just so you can see size wise I'll put those butt to butt this is a four inch bladed knife. I believe this is three and three quarters. Um, but again, you can kind of see the balance of the Stan Wilson about how the handle and blade are almost look very close to the same dimensions there. Uh, here is my Grimsmo Norseman in Damascus. Well, that actually kind of blends right into that towel color. <laughs> Maybe that wasn't the best background. I thought it would go good against the red here, but uh, Maybe not the best against the Grimsmo in the background, but just so you can see, much more on par size-wise there. Yeah, it looks nice. Uh, and then bring this down. This, this. Uh, tough knives, tough thumbs, tough tannic. Just so you can see that. So, some of my more custom pieces all in a row there. Get these out of the way. You want to see smooth here, smooth right there. Whew, that is slippery smooth. Um, but very happy with this. Just wish I could master the closing bolster technique. Oh, you guys got to be freaking out at me seeing this. So, just goes back to the old... back lock closing but excellent piece like I said a lot of heft to it um, 
excellent fit and finish as you would expect. Hope you guys like the specs that I did this in. I really, you know, kind of went with what I thought was more of the, uh, I guess the theme here would be the Swiss Army style. Like it's kind of like a Stan Wilson uh, Swiss Army styled knife here with the red and silver. Uh, and then just the little touches of gold here. I don't know if I give you a full close up of the whole running backspacer slash back lock style here. There we go. So there's that notch where the back lock comes into place. The finishing, the blade. Can't wait for the comments on this video about how I can't close a knife. Um, but also hopefully uh, this showed you a little more in-depth version and, and the experience of what I had from it um, that maybe you didn't get from some other videos. I mean, just this pocket clip as well. Excellent. That nice brushed finish, and then even that little touch of the gold there to go with the gold and the titanium. Oh, there we go. All right, we will finish on that. I <laughs> uh, hope you guys liked this video. Hope you uh, enjoyed what's been going on as far as some of the newer knife acquisitions I've gotten. Like this one uh, just came in a, a month or two ago. And please leave any questions, comments, thoughts, and I will hopefully be getting into some other knife videos as well. And I will be having a knife sale video coming up. Not on this. This is staying with me. Uh, you guys are not getting this one. But I'm going to uh, start getting rid of enlightening some of my other knives I've had in my collection for a while at this point. So, catch you guys later.